So you saw before, um, we have a big fuel leak, potentially a gearbox cooler oil line leak. We have no alternator um, and various issues, including the wipers still. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna strip off the inlet manifold so I can get to the fuel pump. I've got the correct socket to take the, the fuel pump apart. I'm just waiting on the rebuild kit. So I'm gonna take all the inlet manifold off and see whether I can fix the fuel pump in situ without having to take it all off. And also it means I can get to the alternator wiring and see if there's anything going on there. Um, as I've said already, the bulb isn't at fault. So I need to check the wiring next and see what's happening there. Okay, we've got the inlet manifold off. Um, even though when I did the, what did I do? I've done something, it wasn't the glow plugs recently, but before that I did something. I changed all the um, leak off pipes, but as it happens, I have got a leaky um, pipe. It's either that one or that one. So I've just ordered a kit to do the whole lot. I'll be here in a minute. So I'm gonna change all them. Um, I have run it without the inlet manifold on, it runs fine, so I can check for leaks. So I'll change that over, I'll clean it all up, change them over, put new pipes on, and then run it again and see if we still get the leak down the bottom. I think we will, because it looks like too much of a leak. Um, so I think the pump still needs doing. I've got my socket that fits that bolt. That goes all the way through the housing. Um, I ordered that off Tinterweb, so that's here. I've just not got the repair kit yet, the seals, that hasn't arrived. But I thought if I get it stripped down today, if they come today at home or um, tomorrow when I'm not here, at least then Wednesday, I can try and fit them. Because obviously I can do it all in situ. Just got to get this um, loom out of the way, but I can cable tie that back, that's not a problem. Now, as far as the alternator is concerned, uh, obviously I've changed the bulb. So what I'm gonna do now, I just double check to make sure my thinking was right, and it is. If I take off the signal wire from the back of the alternator and earth it and turn the ignition on, I should see whether the bulb comes on on the dashboard, and then I'll know if there's a break in the wire between here and there. So that's my next job to do. Right, so first off, I've taken off this P-clip that was bolted under here, just so I can move this loom a bit and give me access to the pump. I don't know whether I want it this way or over here somewhere. But now, apparently this is quite important. You've got a mark exactly where this sits. Um, so I need a, need a score line or a couple of score lines up here um, to because it, this can slightly move and apparently slightly moving puts the revs and, the, and all sorts and the fueling out. So it needs to go back exactly where it went before. So obviously I cleaned this all up the other day with brake cleaner, so it is now nice and clean. So I can um, mark this in a couple of places. And then we'll begin taking it apart. So that's the first job. Right, I've marked mine as best I can. I know that there is a wobble. Oh, for God's sake. I know there's a wobble at the top, but you can see the line on the top and the bottom. Now, it's a bit difficult to get to because of where it's positioned by the head. You can't get much in there. Um, secondly, on the Volkswagen that I followed the video from, um, I'll put on the screen now who that was, so thank you. Um, his is on a Volkswagen, it's around the other way with a lot more room, because it's the same pump as a Volkswagen. So, I'm gonna have to go with that and see how we get on, because it's also, there's a lip there. So it's not like a flat surface to be able to mark it perfectly. So I think we might have to, um, get it back as close as I can and go from there. I mean, it, people say obviously it moves, but I don't know how much movement there is on these bolts. I can't see it moving a massive amount, but still, whether that also means back and forth, whether it can go that way, but you'll never work out that lip. But these, these flanges here are perfectly flat, front and side. So as long as we ma match that, um, this one, this one down here is as well. That's flat, perfectly. So, as long as we do that, we should be near. I've, heard, I've read that the um, idling is affected by this as well. So as long as we get it back to about 750, 800 RPM when it's running, 
hopefully we'll be all right. So, first job is to pop this top cap off. We've got to undo this special bolt with the special Bosch um, sockets. I'll put a link into where I got them as well. It's like a triangle shape, but this one goes all the way through. It goes through the top section, the middle section, into the bottom section. So we'll undo that one first. Well, I don't know if you can see that. Probably won't focus on it very well. No. But it's a triangle shape. There, you can just about see it there, look. Sort of a triangle shape. And here is a seal cut I got. Bosch 24670100003 V pump sealing kit. There is so many. Oh, hang on. There we go. There are lots of bits here. Um, at the moment, I only want the actual gaskets for the parts joined together because I think that's what's gone. That seems to be the common denominator. I don't know what all the rest are. I don't know if they're injector sealing washers. How many is there? One, two, three, four, five, six. But this is for the pump, not for the injectors. So I don't know what these are. There's oh, Probably if you take the pump off and strip it right down, there's loads more bits in here. But we're just concentrating on these rubber seals because they, you know, um, degrade. And you can see that's already inset. That's not actually making a proper seal. So that is the top off. There is that long one that goes all the way through and then there's three T30s. So first off is this very first one. We're gonna clean this surface up very carefully and this surface and replace this gasket. Right, so we've got two gaskets in the set. We've got this one, oh, this one and this one. This one was obviously the same shape as the one I took off the housing, off the top lid, but obviously a lot thicker and newer. Um, you can't damage that, that face where you um, where the gasket goes. So that's what that little tab is on the corner, is to get a hook under that tab and pull it out without damaging where this sits in. So, I just need to put a bit of diesel or a bit of oil on this one just to let it seal properly. Uh, and then we'll put this back in the housing and put the top back on before we take the next bit off to get to this gasket. Also, I forgot to say, I used a plastic razor blade just to clean the faces off. And then a bit of brake cleaner on a rag just to get that off. I've poured a little bit of fresh oil in there just to run the gasket around so it um, doesn't snag. Right. I've tightened the three torques down. I've left that one out because I say that one goes down all the way. So next is the three, other three on the pump. One, two, three. So this is the one that's marked. So this is the one that's got to come off and is movable apparently. So I'll probably just loosen them, see how it moves just so I know and I'll let you know, and then this lot can come off as well. Okay, I've loosened them up and, yes, you can see it moves quite a bit. So hopefully, can't really see now because I've moved that loom out of the way, but we need to get our line lined up as best we can. So I'm gonna whip them 230s out and then we'll have a look inside the pump. Right, and there we go. See this little knob there, little, uh, little bit that's sticking out, that has got to go in back in that hole in that cam. So you've got to be really careful when you put it back together. I've just cleaned that face off with the blade and some brake cleaner. I now need to do the same with this one before I change the um, gasket. Right, new gasket is on, face is all cleaned up, both ends, so time to put it back together. So as I say, that, that bit has got to go in that hole on the cam. Right, so I made a big mistake. This will teach you, will teach you, <laughs> it will teach me for next time. The markings I put are in the wrong place. I can't see because this is cable tight. The marking should be on the base. I can't, I can't really point to it because of the camera. But that marking should go all the way down to this bit under here. I can't really show you very well. I've stupidly marked the top and the middle section. Well, the middle section is part of the top. So now this moves... Well, it doesn't because I've just tightened, nipped it up. But yeah, it moves and the bit that I didn't mark doesn't. So I've made the mistake. So don't make that same mistake. All I'm going to have to do is go off the dirt on the top of the casing where the screws were and start it and see if it runs okay. If not, I might have to just loosen it and just knock it over a touch and just see if it makes any difference. Whoops. Right, I just started it and it idled at 12.50, so quite a bit higher. So I am out. <laughs> 
joy. So I need to loosen those off, move it about until I can get it to sit right. Don't do the same mistake I did. Right, I've just been for a little run up the road, stunk of fuel, had another look, still leaking. But I think I found why. I've trapped one of the leak off pipes in the manifold as I've done it up. Um, it was pouring out of that injector, as you can see, full of fuel in there. So this needs to be undone and a new pipe, bit of pipe put in. Oh. Right, that's changed, but we do have fuel still leaking. One of the injectors has obviously got a uh, seal gone. I'll try to see if I can show you. go so we need to get some injector seals as well but it's running at the minute so let's keep an eye on it okay so that's the end of that one um the seals the injector seals for the p38 seem to be unobtainable um so the thing i've read to do is to take them off um heat them up cherry red chuck them in cold water and that re annuls them so they're malleable to seal down again so that's what i'm gonna have to try but even with the pump resealed and the leak off pipes done, my MPG has gone up eight. Um, I was struggling to get over 17 before and I'm now getting 23 plus, even with that leaky injector. So hopefully once the leaky injector's sorted out, I'll get back up to sort of 28, 30 that they're kind of supposed to get, which will make a massive difference. Even towing, I got 22 miles to the gallon. So I was chuffed, really chuffed with that. Um, so yeah. So that's the next job is to take that injector out. Hopefully it comes out and then try and do that. So yeah, bit of a win there. Um, obviously other than the mistake on adjusting the pump. Um, first time, as I said, it um, it was revving at 12.50 and chucking out loads of black smoke because it was overfueling. Um, I'd done it too far the other way and it wouldn't start. So I went sort of a little bit further and now we're idling at about 700. So slightly low, but fine. So anyway, make sure you mark it properly. So thanks for watching. Like, subscribe and share. And I'll see you in the next one. Ta-da.